Um, so Judy, um, being involved in the HEAL project, um, why do you think design thinking is important to health? Look, I think design thinking is important to health for many reasons. First of all, because I see the design thinking as human-centred design and of course health's all about people. So it's all about people who are often going through some traumatic events, sometimes for themselves or their family. They're uncomfortable, there's a lot of uncertainty, they don't really know what's happening to them. They're in an environment that's actually very foreign. So there's all these possibilities that really throw them a bit off kilter. So I think design thinking in terms of what's happening with the person, what's happening with their family, what's happening in this context, making that simple, usable, friendly is essential. And often we're all so busy. I guess I've been involved a bit in health myself and you really, you're there for a, for a purpose and it might be treatment, might be diagnosis, but really the person there is still there. And so design thinking really bridges that gap helps people see, okay, the first thing we need to do is actually relax this person a little, let mm -hmm. them know that we're listening. And certainly we don't have all the time in the world, but there are many ways of doing that. So I think it's essential for the person. I also think clinicians, because they work with people all the time, make a real difference. And so I think, that, and I guess, and we've all seen that clinicians who use design thinking, in, particularly in the health context, really can make a difference. And so there's both of those. And then of course, the whole environment, I mean, there's lots of good studies that show design thinking's made a difference in terms of how an environment is established, how it's used. And all those things sometimes are very small, but they just make people feel very much at home. So, I mean, I think design thinking is essential for pretty much any professional, let alone a health professional, who's there when people are often at their most vulnerable. So I'm a great advocate for design thinking. <laughs> yeah, that's a really great reminder because you forget, I think, that for most people, a hospital is a foreign environment. Yay. Yeah. You know? and, and they're so vulnerable. Mm. Like, they're so worried. Mm. Of, and it's quite it's stressful. It's about mm. like Piku, those, mm. aren't they, those children who are just so sick and yeah. Yeah. some... It's often the worst moment of your life or yes. one of the bad times. Yes. And so, and the clinicians are there to give the health care, but if we can use design thinking mm. to support that, whether it's design, redesigning the environment, systems, processes, products, whatever it might be. Yeah. It's kind of that, it's kind of that additional... Bonus sort of. Yes. Yeah. 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 Additional yeah. tool in the in your backpack. Yes. Kind of. yeah. <laughs> it makes such a difference. Yeah. yeah. In the PICU project, I think just seeing the clinicians in that project, they really valued <clears throat> the fact that they had time to step away yes. and actually yes. think about their patients in a different way. Mm. Um, so I think that's valuable in itself, yep. is actually having that moment to rethink. And actually, if we just talk a moment about like disciplines and different disciplines. So often, you know, clinicians, whether it's a nurse, or a physio, OT, doctor, whatever it might be, so trained in their own sort yeah, of- Yeah, expertise. You know, yes. Yeah, yeah. But they really value the design expertise, mm, you know, okay. whether that's architecture, interior design, yes. you know, interaction design, visual communication, fashion, whatever it is. The disciplines that perhaps clinicians are not very familiar with, we can all see the value of each other's skills yes. and coming together. Um, first off, we have to learn a common language. Design yeah. <laughs> thinking. Yeah, right. Language is a big thing. Uh, yeah. Language and acronyms. Yes, um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but a what, challenge. But yeah. once we get past that and, and we have to yeah, develop that kind of way of working together, it's just such an impact, right? Yeah. What I love, have you seen that um, the Kelly creative confidence video and, yes. it, and they show you this photo of what happened with a, an MRI machine mm. for children and how they turned it into a pirate, pirate ship. Yeah. Yes, yeah. and so kids had to be really still and they were told, you know, or else the pirates will, will, will hear you and they'll find you. And so then this, right at the end, the little girl comes up to her mommy and says, mommy, can we come back tomorrow? Yeah. Hello? The power of <laughs> She enjoyed it. Right? Yeah, the power of storytelling, <laughs> yeah. the power of art, creative and design, lead approach. Yeah, 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 and like make it bigger than people. I just, that, and I, that's thinking so powerful. That the kids were really engaged in, in that story, yes. or that being part of a. Well, and, and an up till then, I mean, kids had had to be sedated. Yeah. It was a very slow process. So and everybody scary. was frustrated. They didn't want to do it. And so 
parents are feeling bad because here's their child who's actually a bit disturbed. So, oh no, I think design thinking is certainly for health. <laughs> That's right. I mean, and you know, we did our own version of that here too. We went to Children's Hospital. Yes. Um, you know, you see the walls before yes. on the floors of the sixth floor, yes. and then we co-designed and installed yes. the murals that you know of parrots having fun, parrots at play, and already working these stories of how you know the. Uh, speech therapists are coming down and using that space and interacting with the walls and there's playful wayfinding there's a real sense of arrival uh, people know all right feel more welcome yes, to the space exactly um, and this is this, where I want to be. That's yeah, right. Yeah. And so, I mean, that's a great example of sort of creative design mm. uh, with innovative placemaking. Yep. Mm. You know, and, and, and experience. A sense of play. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I am an interior designer, so I really value that process of um, understanding the users better to then design better environments. Yeah, I yeah. don't think that happens enough. It's your in, bread and butter really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, and it's it's quite telling when you see environments that really haven't. They may have done a bit of focus groups or whatever, mm. but mm. not to the extent where they really understand how processes work in that environment. Yes. I mean, and we appreciate that, you know, the, the, I guess the constraints of finances and design decisions and things like that, but actually putting a lot more thought and priority on how spaces are used and designed for use, flexible use. And I think we've seen that through COVID. Yeah, you know, and how, how they make people feel. Correct. Doing all those things, I think that will be the future of the design of healthcare spaces. Absolutely. Um, as well, we add, let's not talk about technology actually, otherwise we'll be here all day. Yes. Yeah, so let's not, <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about technology another day. But I wanted, Judy, do you want to tell us a little bit about the origins of design thinking? Well, as you know, design thinking and doing has been around for centuries, but I guess more recently, probably about 15 years ago, IDEO, that really big design company that we all know and love, started thinking about what is it that we're doing, not just in terms of products, but in terms of services. And so Tim Brown, who was then the CEO of IDEO, wrote this article in the Harvard Business Review, and that tends to be the one that everybody talks about, where he talks about thinking in designerly ways, combining the needs of individuals, the possibilities in the environment and of course the viability of the organisation. So I think he was, he and his company more broadly, yeah. really moved this whole notion of what, what design is possible of doing to many more contexts, certainly in the business mm. context, mm. which is probably where, in management context, but certainly in education. Mm. I mean, we know all the d-school work that's come out of them, but it really was those designers who got together and said, listen, this just makes such a difference. We need to really share this with others. So I, that's really how I see. And design thinking, of course, happens in different places around the world. Mm -hmm. So there's different almost origin stories, but mm -hmm. that probably is a dominant it's one for one. Western yeah. society. And yeah. I, I think designers learn how to design, but they don't often know how to tell someone how to design. So I think the design thinking processes and skills and toolkits that have been developed by the likes of IDEO mm. and Stanford D School yeah. are really valuable for people that are non-designers to really yes, exactly. get it, their to, hands on and yeah. actually to explore, explore. and yeah, really yeah. participate yeah. in and, like, and, and we, the great literature that's oh, around these days. So we will share these books, um, but these, so this, this is a design thinking tool book. It's amazing. Great book. Um, yeah. It's, you know, it's literally designed by or written by some people from D school. Yeah, and it literally just walks through all the kind of tools that you can use in the design thinking workshop yeah. and yeah. with the, with the examples and online templates. So there's a lot of resources out mm. there to do yeah. it. I don't think that doesn't like these are important and are, are critical, but you still need like you still need the mindset correct. and you yeah. need the facilitation. Yeah. And you Absolutely. really need I think a bit of a guide. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's no one skill or tool tool to use you, you have to obviously look at each mm. project on its own merit that's right and come together as a group and decide yeah. you know okay what kind of tools and methods and approaches are we going to use like designing any kind of project yeah um and so these kind of these are offer a basis particularly for perhaps non-designers yeah. who might be doing exactly. design thinking um but it's really important to come together as a group and to represent you know to rip you know respect i guess discipline expertise and mm. knowledge absolutely you know. i think it's really important to have a great facilitator, yeah. particularly when That's, you're starting that. And a timekeeper. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping yeah. people under pressure. Yeah. 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 Because and I, keep moving. Yeah. 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 And do, do you want to talk about why pressure is important uh, when it comes to creativity, Natalie? Yeah, I think um, 
pressure and deadlines is something that I've grown up with as an interior designer. Um, but I guess essentially it really gives people constraints and people design better with, cons with more constraints. If you let people design and give them you know, nothing to go on. Yeah. You can't. It's too woolly and wild. That's right. Yeah. Whereas if so you the more constraints, the better. Mm. And particularly time is one of those. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think people work really well under pressure. Plus, yeah. you don't get people going off on their own tangents. Mm. You yeah. really need to focus on the task at hand and what they're actually got to achieve in, in a time frame. So yeah. one of the methods I like to use, a colleague that I came up with, is like that theory storming. So you actually instruct people to be the voice of a particular perspective. So I'd put like, yeah. a, sometimes a physical hat too, put a hat on Judy and say, radio, I want you to be the voice of bioflick design that is designing with nature in mind. Or I want you, Natalie, to be the voice of a child with a disability. Or I'm the voice of a parent. And so you respond to the challenge from that perspective. And I think that can be a really powerful way to get people out of thinking like themselves, yeah, you know, and yeah, actually absolutely. thinking through the lens of somebody else, and that's yeah. you know that empathy. Yeah, um, role yeah. plays role play is really good for that too. Mm. So we saw a bit of that in our CQ in fellows our scenarios. workshops. That were yeah. very good, and um, just the act of of going through a scenario by doing it really. Mm gives you that experiential quality of what that is about and what people are feeling and yep. and doing. So um, that's another great one that we've used quite a bit. We are pushing people past their com comfort zone. Absolutely. Like, and ourselves, actually, pushing ourselves past their comfort zone yeah. too. Because, you know, that's where growth and yes. all the positive things yeah. happen, right? Yeah. You I know? mean, prototyping's great because yep. you can get people to Essential. make things, yeah. you can get people yeah. to draw things, yep. all that visualisation skills, but also like performative skills, mm. really getting them to act out what might happen and, and therefore, you know, really understanding the pains and gains. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, we've kind of covered this, but yeah. how does design think you make a difference to health, Judy, do you think? Um, well, I think we're sort of pursuing the same issue. I think it makes a difference to health context in small and large areas. I think it makes a difference on a ward. I think it makes a difference to a team, but also in the environment, as you mm. used some examples before. I also think sometimes clinicians are sort of on the edge of that. Mm. Sometimes they have some ideas they'd really like to pursue and giving them almost the permission or the challenge of coming together to maybe what if, mm. you know, let's be imaginative, let's put away all those constraints about resources and time. You know, mm. if you have, you know, unlimited budget or what would, uh, yeah. Yeah. What would Branson really do? What would It's actually a really positive focus, yes. isn't mm. it? Yes. I mean, there's a lot of negatives in, in healthcare, yeah, right. yeah. but focusing on what can we do better is just so empowering, It flips isn't it? the mindset, yeah. flips the approach, and then it flips the energy, yeah. which actually then, you know, results in outcomes and in change. Yeah. And that's, you know, all leadership teams know that, that actually we have to work together and we get a lot more accomplished if we're positive and proactive. And these are the kind of tools yeah. that uh, make it happen. And also I think it sees the whole person. Like mm. there's a functional thing about we want people to get well in the best way they can, but also we want them to feel good about it. And we want yeah. the family to be mm. part of that because really they're the ones going forward. They're the ones who are there every day. Mm. And so yeah. that they have a positive feeling towards the health environment they've had some assistance with. Really good point. It's like a and also when bridges. They leave. So the story yes. of care that they tell is going to be a positive one. Yes. You know, and so yes. the net result. And there's always ups and downs, yeah. but on the whole, yeah, they couldn't get better care than That's they've right. had here. And yeah. you can use design thinking as a tool to make sure that the our care culture is yes, delivering what we want. Well. Yes, yeah. alive and well. Yeah. 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 And yeah. the story of care that people take away from having been in a hospital or healthcare facility is one that we are all proud of. Mm, and yes. if there is something that's wrong, we address it. We yes. don't hide Let it. Let us know. Yeah. yeah. We'll and we address fix it. it. Yeah. You know, and we yeah. work together, you know, with consumers, with carers, with families, work in partnership to solve these problems. Yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Very exciting. Yeah. And so in terms of resources, um, We've got resources on our website. Yeah, loads of resources. Uh, loads this of resources. is a great um, report about yeah. all of the projects that we we're involved in, in in the HEAL project. That's right. It gives a bit of a summary. Um, this video is a resource. Um, even just Googling yeah. design thinking for health. Oh, there's so much. Yeah. Yes, yeah. indeed. I was looking, putting that together this morning. And even when, you know, in terms of health environments, mm. not just in terms of health relationships mm. and, and teams. 
Yeah, there's yeah. a lot around. And you know what? I reckon it's going to be lots more because that's what all these resources are saying. Mm. People are hungry for that's how true. do we do this. Yeah. I also think it's really good if people have a potential to experience this with others. I think, as you mentioned mm. before, these are really quite useful in terms of coming up with new methods and mm. approaches, but it isn't until you really experience. Mm. Yeah. Once you experience it, then yes. you are a convert. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. exactly. So actually, that's our mission and vision. <laughs> every clinician <laughs> in Queensland <laughs> and every administrator well, and leadership go for team, rope, I that's right, yeah. come and have some first-hand experience yes. in design thinking, design doing. Yes upskill themselves, take some of these tools and yes. ideas, because you can take little parts of it. Yes. You know? Yeah. I think just jump in. I mean, mm. once you jump in, you've got your team, mm. you've got a problem, then you can think about what tools you need and, and how you're going to deliver it. Um, and that's that's the easy part. Mm. The hard part is actually building the team and getting people. What's that saying? Is that that perfection problem? is the enemy of progress or something? <laughs> you know, and, and, and I know that, you know, in a hospital healthcare setting, things do have to be perfect but mm, from a design led yes. approach actually we want people to be a little bit more comfortable with taking you know risks that don't put it that no one's going to be harmed from these risks but actually just being a little bit more experimental and a bit yeah. more brave and, and if they fail out, then so try what? again that's right yeah. but keep on trying and think outside the box yeah yeah i had a, a senior nursing administrator in a private hospital not far from here who was really concerned about the discharge process of cardiac patients and while she'd raised this a few times it's not the sort of thing you're allowed to talk about. So she she worked with her colleagues on a whiteboard and said, you know, how might we improve this discharge process? And so they came, and so she almost did a bit like mm. we do with Piku. So it's almost like remote because they're so busy. They yeah. never have time to mm. meet. So she developed some different processes and really made a difference. Yeah. So, so that's really good um, so people know the how might we question is kind of the central Yes. Yeah. Yes. How might Defining we take some it. action do to it achieve our objectives? So you yeah. could just even just write that on a whiteboard yes. on yeah. on your hallway. Yes. Like I know, um, Sun, uh, Sunshine Coast Hospital have done. Um, they've got a whiteboard in the ED that is kind of for idea brainstorming. You write, and so you can literally write, "How might we write your program project?" And then just have people. Yep. Put ideas yeah. there. So then she she obviously themed those ideas and they got, then got people to vote in their spare time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Three votes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then and. So it was like a moving whiteboard, if you know, a yeah. moving story. Yeah. And then she said, okay, let, can we make some time to actually try out some of these things? Mm. It just made such a difference. Mm. Yeah. So getting people together. Yep. Yeah. And actually just getting started. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I think one thing I learned from the PICU project is choosing ways of doing things to engage staff and families. Yeah that yep. are time friendly because everyone yes. is stressed, everyone has mm. no yes. time, time poor. Um, yeah. everyone has different shifts, yep. you know, you've got to think of strategies that engage all these people but it might be at different times. And yeah. acknowledge those ways. constraints. But yeah. also engagement that is impactful and for a purpose. So yes, exactly. One of, one yes. of the projects we did, we asked yeah. um, clinicians and uh, patients and to take photographs of what it was like to have in the rehab ward yes. you know, at, at both at both um, two different hospitals and then we took photographs of that and shared that and exhibited that on the walls of it's at Ipswich Hospital at the moment um, and on the day we installed it you know clinicians were walking past and I'm going oh I actually you know Bruna Hospital is only 45 minutes away but they hadn't been and I'm like oh I didn't know they did that there oh look how great that is so already they <laughs> were learning all that they were they were learning yes. about different processes they're like oh I didn't know that they were doing yeah. this yeah. you know this activity there oh look I see how they're doing this that's really cool uh, like mm. so the, yeah, through visual a visual information it's really right yeah. Yeah. because no one's yeah. got yeah. time but yeah. actually you might pause and you find might, a way that's right yeah that's and, nice and kind of sneakily yeah. kind of build that kind of sense of community yes uh, and knowledge exchange that we share. yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and how did this work for you? And yeah. yes, yeah. and just kind of oh, I saw a photograph where you did that. Mm. That looked really cool. Mm. Tell me yeah. more about yeah. it. It's kind of that prompt mm. for knowledge exchange, and uh, these kind of things are happening yes. know, across our healthcare yes. system. Yes, but we, in the world that we live, we've got to be doing it in Conscious different ways. And, yeah. 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 Make, we actually sure had happen. to do that for the PICU project. We had it organised all the a workshop yes. to, to bring staff COVID. and families together yeah. and then we had a lockdown. Mm. Yeah. So we had to completely pivot to another mm. process. Right, all together. Which yeah. actually ended up working much, much better, better than mm. what much a workshop better. would have done because yeah. everyone's time poor. Yeah. Mm. So it was fabulous. We had a, a you know, a marketplace where people could just drop in mm. when they had time, when they yeah. felt like they wanted a chat. And it much worked beautifully. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Customised to that group. 
Yeah. Describe, re- describe the marketplace to me more. Um, so the marketplace we set up in the space that we were thinking about re- in the, in reconfiguring the, exactly. as a village. And so we took that village metaphor and we used that metaphor to then develop these engagement strategies that actually so suited. Almost like a town square. Yeah, town square approach. And they left little notes or something in there, is that right? Yeah, we had these affirmation puzzles where people could... Um, you know, write or draw on little um, discs and then put them up on the wall and make a, a mural. Um, we had um, uh, photos up on the wall where people could ma- put comments on mm, them like to photos talk about the, what yeah. w- was of concern for them. So it was a great strategy in, in asking people what they felt, but not time consuming and fun mm. at yes, the same time yeah. and engaging a conversation because yeah. a lot of the parents really just want to talk to someone yes mm. um, yes and that isolation that they need to overcome and who yes. do you tell all this problem to like you've worn out your partner you've worn mm. out your family but you really still need to talk to someone yes. exactly so i mean design really is just putting some different lenses and different absolutely yes. yep. into yep. trying to solve some of these problems. A human-centered yeah. approach 